Welcome to the Traders Show. This show is brought to you by Pepperstone. Pepperstone is an award-winning online global forex and CFD broker. It offers unparalleled service, exceptional pricing, and fast execution speed. Pepperstone gives you access into the global markets with more trading opportunities, fast class customer service, and peace of mind. Withdrawals are quick, and for those in Kenya, M-Pesa is enabled. Pepperstone Markets is regulated by the Capital Markets Authority. To open an account with Pepperstone, you can click the links on the descriptions below. Hey guys, welcome back to the second episode in this season 2 of the Traders Show podcast and I'm here joined with Ken and Taras. And today we're having a very interesting topic that will set the mood for the year or let's say for the first quarter especially because markets really change and today's topic we're going to talk about our outlook of the markets as a whole for this year, what we see, what we think, the insights we have, what uh what analysis we have for the year in the markets as general in the in general so we'll talk about a few things i think i'll start off I'll, I'll i'll guide the show today i have a lot of questions here i'm joined by on my side i'm joined by taras if you come for a course he's one who's in charge of risk i mean fundamental yes he's in charge of risk management but he's also in charge of fundamental analysis we'll talk a lot about fundamentals today and on my left here i have ken who's an avid reader and he reads a lot about these things and he has a lot of information for me i am <laughs> i am the open guy who does not know a lot of stuff but i seek to find the truth and know what is happening in the market so i'm very open whatever i don't know i'm very open to to ask and Sina Aibu as we say in Kiswahili. Uh, I'm not embarrassed not to know, yeah. It's uh, I was reading I was hearing a podcast, was it a podcast I was reading somewhere. It's more important to be uh, acknowledge the fact that you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And seek to find out now what you don't know, yeah. So that's what we are going to do today. Um and yeah, so so Taras, uh, how's your week been? Uh, you? greetings everyone. Uh, so my name is Taras as Kaleba said. I'm in charge of risk management uh, and also fundamentals <coughs> at Financial Hub when you come for our courses. So today we are going to talk uh, deeply into markets so going uh, deeply into markets just to set the mood for 2022 what we believe our analysis is so this is personal uh, this, this is basically our personal thoughts and none of these ideas is meant for any financial uh, financial advice so it's all for educational purposes and just uh, to share what we think about the markets uh, moving forward for 2022 so uh, we'll talk about thing um, uh, uh, major topics like interest rates inflation uh, and employment uh, and uh, last majorly for me then uh ken uh, i think has more on uh bonds so we we'll, uh, will just try and cover uh, uh, basically the general market from stocks to currencies crypto bonds uh and almost uh just any financial asset that we uh, we cover here at financial hub so that's it for me for today and uh I think uh we'll catch up uh when we roll out the podcast ken ken how are you uh, <coughs> hello hello traders welcome back to another episode like caleb said In this episode we're going to talk about the fundamental outlook of the market so a hawkish fed inflation a sell off in the crypto assets a sell off in the stock market these are some of the things that are moving markets and we're going to tackle them we're going to talk about the different things that are happening the risks contained in the market and how you can handle <coughs> them moving forward so that's the topic of the day again my name is Aken I work alongside these two and we have a lot that we're going to share with you in this episode so Caleb Yeah cool so <coughs> starting off um for me i think the first and mo- most important thing i want us to start off mm-hmm. in this discussion is interest rates yep interest rates is the backbone of any financial instrument everything yep. respects interest rates so yep. i think it's something it's very important for us to start off yeah so my personal view back then uh, just to catch up a bit covid-19 came uh interest rates by that time it was around 1.75 to 2%. Yep. We dropped all the way to 0.5 0.25 between 0 to 0.2.5% um on the interest rates basically what we call zap yep. uh zap z i r p zero interest rates policy yep. which was <coughs> done the last time we had zap looking at history was back in 2008 after yep. financial yep. crisis. And back then it stayed for almost 8 years. Yeah. We stayed in the zap so almost the whole uh presidential time mm. of obama yeah. and that time we saw a very good bull market bull market came started had Recovered. a bit of correction then we continued so we had a very good bull market during that time and not only in stocks but we saw a lot of things rising i don't know about bonds i think ken will share with us later on but also i think it helped a lot of asset classes come up like cryptocurrencies it was yeah. easy it was and at least with commodities also had commodities as well yeah. 
Yeah, well? yeah, gold, okay. gold, yeah. So ever since we had that now the recent one for the past almost three years now. Okay. For the since we got back to the zero to zero point five zero point two five since, since the Corona. Long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That March, around March. Yeah, March. March, 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 March is when they started, yeah. yeah. Now um yesterday we had the Jerome Powell talking. Okay. Yeah. 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 And he talked a bit about. I think I think before you go on, uh, for the audience, just for for the people, because yeah. there are people who don't know who Jerome Powell is, uh, they don't understand what the Federal Reserve is, they don't understand mm-hmm. why interest rates are important. important. Yeah. Can so. you just briefly define all those things for people to just get familiar? Then you can go on. Okay. <coughs> you want to do that? <coughs> okay. So first of all, the Federal Reserve. Let me let me start there. Then I'll just break it down. The Feds. The Feds. So they are normally called the Feds. Anyone who is new in the markets, maybe you've never heard of the Feds, but over time you'll come and understand this. An institution called the Federal Reserve, and basically the Federal Reserve is the central bank of the United States. Uh, so if you're trading currencies or if you're trading any financial markets, you'll understand the 80-20 principle, which means. 20% of the economies will definitely control what happens in 80% of the economies. Mm-hmm. And the one the a part of the economies that control what happens includes the US, China, uh, Germany and the eurozone mm-hmm. basically. Uh, so in the US the ones who are responsible for controlling how the economy grows, slows down, what goes on in the economy is the Federal Reserve. Now Jerome Powell is the head of the Federal Reserve. So mm-hmm. Jerome Powell is the one who runs the Federal Reserve. His contract was renewed the other day. So I think he'll be running the organization for another four years. And basically the mandate of the Fed is to ensure the economy is growing well and inflation is at the right level. Yeah, and how they do that, and employment exactly, the labor and employment, yeah, mm-hmm. the labor market. Uh, how they do that is by use of monetary policy. So many monetary policy basically deals with interest rates. So if you look back into economics, you'll understand that uh, much of progress is reliant or is dependent on capital. And while for you to leverage or for you to get on capital, people tend to rely on loans. And for the one who's giving out the loan to make money, which is the bank, they have to charge you an interest rate. And that's why interest rates are so important. Yeah. I think it's because the economy runs on debt. Exactly. All economies run on debt. Like if All you look economies. at the economy of the US, I think they are, they are, their debt to GDP ratio is 1 to 15. <coughs> One, one? 115 debt to GDP ratio. Mm. Like yep. Their, their debt is 115% more than their GDP. GDP. Mm-hmm. If you look at a country like Japan, they have more than 250% debt Jet to GDP, GDP ratio. ratio. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the countries are doing good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. now you can go on with the yeah, So that was good. Yeah. <coughs> so yeah, as Ken said, the Fed CBK in charge of monetary policy and I think it's also important to note that people should know then the government is in charge of fiscal policy yep yeah. taxation the executive. budget of the mo- mm. of, yep. of the country economy so yeah so yeah. you can do more research on that so just to touch a bit on what Jerome Powell said he said or what was around what the tone the, the tone that was around is that they just took an excerpt from um, CNBC yeah the federal the federal reserve expects it will soon be appropriate to raise the target range for the federal funds rate as inflation is well above 2% and the labor market is strong beginning in february the central bank will increase its holdings of treasury securities by at least 20 billion dollars per month and of agency mortgage backed securities at, at 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 least by at least 10 billion dollars per month powell said the committee is of of a mind to raise the fed funds rate at the end, at march meeting okay the next meeting that they'll have if conditions are there to do so while noting that officials have not made any decisions about the path of policy because <coughs> it needs to be nimble the annual inflation rate of the us accelerated to 7% yeah okay in the last month of 2021 so basically last december a fresh high since 1982 so 40 years inflation now 40 year high 40 year high inflation spiked in 2021 due to pandemic induced supply constraints soaring energy costs labor shortages increasing demand and low base effect from 2020 inflationary pressures are likely to last well into the middle of 2022 and fed powell recently pledged to do what's necessary to contain the inflation surge including increasing interest rates okay so now they're starting to play the lever game yeah the lever now they're starting to pull there 
the gears market re- uh, reacted yesterday and we saw strong drops but the drop did not start okay so this is personal my point so yesterday during that whole news and the whole uh, uh, that period when the Powell, when after interest rates came and power was speaking mm-hmm. there was a lot of reaction in the markets and we saw market starting to drop okay but personally i believe uh, sort of this was already factored in a while back that's yeah. why we've been seeing dollars been rising not from yesterday but from yeah. last year okay and it was already factored in into the market especially when the fed started talking about about tapering and all that yeah, so the dollar i think started getting <coughs> the market participants already factored that into the market so what, what do you guys think what do you think about the dollar and the market and the interest rates from in the us uh for me uh, it's i i especially I, with what paul <coughs> said yeah, yeah, in for coming me, it's all about uh like all this all this all these things have a relationship and it's a cause effect relationship in that uh as ken said the central bank has a mandate of controlling the economy and uh they control the economy by checking the two things inflation and uh labor market so for now they can check uh their their labor market tick mm-hmm. but their inflation uh, uh checkbox is still the worry so uh, uh uh they've managed to to lower the inflation rate from uh, uh sorry not inflation rate from uh, the, the unemployment rate from a high of uh, i think it, it went to high of about 24 25% during When the covid uh, during started the, uh, uh, during the covid period Right now it's it's less than 4% which is always uh, their target like keeping unemployment uh, uh, less than 4%. So th- they they've managed to to take the unemployment uh, uh 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 agenda. Yeah. That one they've managed. But uh for that there's also a consequence that that uh, uh in pursuit of uh, uh, lowering unemployment they pumped in money into the economy. Too much money into the economy. Mm-hmm. They were giving free uh, stimulus. They were uh, they were uh, the open uh, open market operations. They they uh, bond uh, bond buying programs there were uh, lo- a low interest rate environment so uh with uh, with that environment there was a consequence there mm-hmm. was too much money in, uh, in the, the economy in the economy when there's too much money in the economy it tends to lead to inflation so uh general price of goods are uh, uh, are rose one because of uh, the supply constraints as as uh, as you said and also uh because mm-hmm. of the low interest environments mm-hmm. so for that now uh cause one because they were pumping money the dollar was of course uh basic supply and demand theory mm-hmm. Too much supply of something uh, devalues the uh, devalues the asset. Mm-hmm. So when the dollars were too much in the economy, that's why the whole of 2020 we saw a, a dollar, dollar drop. drop. And 2021, yeah, 2021, more or less. Yeah, 2021 for some point. Then I uh, started making that recovery. You said the the markets are always ahead. Mm-hmm. So markets uh, market participants started seeing uh, the, uh, the central bank is uh, removing tapering mm-hmm. and all that, and that's why the dollar now started making that comeback. And uh, until uh, uh, this year now, we've seen also uh, from from uh, yesterday's uh, from yesterday's a uh, speech yeah, from speech. yesterday's meeting a mm-hmm. uh, speech uh, he he also stated that uh, he like, like they will do anything to bring an, uh, inflation down so to bring inflation down you also have to go back to the levels you're talking about what mm-hmm. will you change mm-hmm. so if you had uh, lowered interest rate last time to to uh, to, uh, to to counter uh, uh, unemployment now you have to increase rates to counter inflation mm-hmm. so that th- they've not increased rates yet but that mm-hmm. like that tone that statement that hawkish tone mm-hmm. is what makes market participants believe that uh, 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 of course rates will be uh, will be raised mm-hmm. for last year they were very skeptical about even stating that they are uh, they are planning to raise rates they didn't mention yeah they didn't they mention that at you are planning to raise rates maybe on march or something <coughs> but for this year they they've, they've been open about actually they've said they have uh, they have a plan to raise uh, four times for this year mm-hmm. so 0.25% percent four times mm-hmm. so uh, you see like that tone already market participants know uh, in future the dollar will be now m- are more valuable so i think that's the reason why uh, yesterday the dollar had a a, a strong uh, a, 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 a bullish a, 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 a breakout and mm-hmm. uh, the the uh, counter dollar assets like mm-hmm. uh, uh, cryptos and uh, uh, sorry uh, commodities and mm-hmm. stocks they had a, a bearish move so that was a very very uh, uh, clear move if you if you know how, how how fundamentals work that was very very clear we uh, i think we all expected the dollar strength and we expected uh at least stocks to, uh, to come down also mm-hmm. technically just uh not from from fundamentals also technically uh i was expecting the dow jones uh, basically to 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 drop from certain levels i watch mm-hmm. and they and they've done that too fast so i think that just by uh, within the last uh month nasdaq mm-hmm. is down about 14% already Mm-hmm. Dow Jones is more is down more than 5% already so mm-hmm. i think that like this big percentages now will create uh 
basically uh, a, a confidence now for sellers to come into the markets because mm-hmm. i think that's the biggest drop since covid started i, mm-hmm. I don't think we've seen a monthly close i think the, uh, the monthly close will be in a few days mm-hmm. and uh if we close in, uh, in a 14% drop that will be one of the biggest drops since covid started mm-hmm. so that can create a ripple effect for for sellers to come in mm-hmm. but also maybe they uh, 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 until we raise rates maybe some bullish tone will be in the markets mm-hmm. still but for now mm-hmm. with the uh, uh, with yesterday's speech the uh the the that tone was very very hawkish mm-hmm. and uh, i think uh for now i'm i'm very bearish on the stock markets and very bullish on the dollar mm-hmm. yep and and can w- w- what's the disadvantage of high inflation what's the disadvantage of high inflation okay. like why 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 does the fed need to come in and act okay you 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 just have to think about the purchasing power of money Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so inflation is basically the purchasing power of money losing value. So mm-hmm. if you have a thousand shillings mm-hmm. and inflation is sitting at two percent, then it means with your thousand shillings you can buy particular goods mm-hmm. or you can pay for a particular service. Mm-hmm. But once inflation jumps to seven percent, it means that uh, the thousand bob you had cannot buy some certain things. So you will need to spend more money to acquire the same things. Basically. Money is losing value, mm-hmm. and no one likes operating with money when it's losing value. Mm-hmm. No country would like the currency to be completely devalued. There are situations where it's right to devalue a currency. For example, uh, when you're in a crisis, when you're mm-hmm. in a recession, mm-hmm. it's always wise to devalue a currency. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, when the economy is doing so well, when an economy is doing so well and inflation is also so high, then even the economy doing well is not valuable. Because as much as there is growth, there is also inflation, and if inflation is countering growth, then it doesn't really work out well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because still, as you're growing, you still have to spend more. So it's not really growth that is taking place because there is high inflation, mm-hmm. and that's why the Feds have to come in and drop down inflation to a moderate rate. Mm-hmm. So if you look at it historically, inflation has always, or will always try and sit be- below two percent. So two percent is the target range of the Feds. Mm-hmm. Even annual inflation sits at. 2% it's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh but after covid and the pumping of money like you guys said like was explaining very well so the pumping in of money too much liquidity came into the market mm-hmm. and so there was very very the easy money. How much was pumped in, in total so far in the past 2 3 years? About 6 trillion dollars uh, and that's just from the US. If you look at worldwide a global a, a global that's a market, lot of a money because yeah. yeah, yeah. euro also had uh, the other uh, mm-hmm. stimulus and stuff, yeah. Yeah, in Kenya we also had them. So globally across the world we, were, we I think the basic prem uh, the basic idea we can start with is uh, we are moving markets operate in cycles uh, we have bullish times we have bearish time we have times when investors are optimistic we have time when people turn pessimistic we have times when people are greedy mm-hmm. and we have times when people become fearful yep. and so the pendulum will always swing between these things so we'll always have a swing between yeah, those sure. emotions views mm-hmm. and everything which are somehow connected for mm-hmm. example uh, when people are so optimistic they tend to be greedy and when they are greedy they tend to take too much risk and when they take too much risk they bring in frothiness for example if you look like at a coin like bitcoin mm-hmm. uh, like a specific asset like bitcoin uh, we mm-hmm. saw bitcoin come from 5000 all the way to 65000 mm-hmm. that brought in a lot of optimism bitcoin is going to the moon mm-hmm. uh, we saw a lot of money coming in Uh, mm-hmm. we saw a lot of people operating on fear of missing out we saw a mm-hmm. lot of new money into the market irrational exuberance, irrational exuberance. Mm-hmm. and now we are swimming from that again back to fear panic mm-hmm. uh, pessimism mm-hmm. uh, we need to work really mm-hmm. is it our so technology that's the tone in the market that's now the back tone again. in the market yep. back again mm-hmm. so it's a normal cycle which mm-hmm. will always operate up down up down up down up down with the long trajectory exactly mm-hmm. in the long run productivity is moving mm-hmm. higher mm-hmm. and so that's what is happening currently mm-hmm. so for me i think because you guys have both explained the cycle and the interest rates i think what i can touch on is assets mm-hmm. uh, so first of all people need to understand the relationship between the economy and the markets yep. uh, i think that is something that many people don't understand Uh, so first of all markets will always be ahead of the economy mm-hmm. uh, so markets won't wait for the economy to start going down for markets to go down no so markets are uh, are always ahead of economic reality they're mm-hmm. like an indicator and that's why the feds mm-hmm. have to also watch what the markets are doing yeah. if the markets speak in a certain way the feds knowing the, mm-hmm. the feds know that this is dangerous the, mm-hmm. the mandate of the fed obviously is not to control the markets mm-hmm. but still what happens in the markets must affect what the feds do because mm-hmm. if markets go down completely they have to pump in liquidity and bring back assets back up 
you get so there is that relationship but sometimes the economy uh, the markets could be wrong about the economy so sometimes yeah, the sure. markets could be expecting the economy to grow at a certain percentage mm-hmm. but it doesn't happen mm-hmm. or the markets could be pricing in a, a a jump or a hike in rates but it mm-hmm. doesn't happen mm-hmm. so for example currently what markets are telling us is we've seen 10% collapse in the dow uh, we've seen a 14% collapse on the nasdaq Uh, we've seen and Dow is, is 5.7 5.7 yeah for Dow. the month yeah Dow is not strongly down it's 5.7 for the month currently we are trading at 34000 about 34000 yeah. yeah, okay see, it's about so, it's about 6. Point okay something. i think my target is 33000 that's why i'm okay. looking for a 10% collapse okay mm. so yeah the dow bitcoin is down also mm. significantly a lot. uh yep. and other risk assets are also quite quite down including across the globe That's the funny thing with markets they are also interconnected. And the reason these markets are going down is they are pricing in that rate hike. So sure. what is really happening if you think about it? When you lower rates what you're basically doing is you're trying to pump growth into the economy by giving people capital. So capital is a factor of production in economics. There are four factors of production: labor, capital, entrepreneurship and land. So if you give people money they have something to produce. Yeah. If someone capital they can start a business they can do this And so capital is useful mm-hmm. you get mm-hmm. so when capital is available growth comes in for sure yeah. productivity productivity increases mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but when you what happens when you remove that capital mm-hmm. growth right. has to come down exactly mm-hmm. and so markets going down means that they're expecting at least growth to come down and mm-hmm. the challenge the feds have is that uh as they try to lower inflation will they also tamper with growth That's the big that, question. That's, that's the big game now they're playing. So that's the big game. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest risk they're facing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Now that's that's the why match. they have to do it at a slow pace. They exactly. can't just jump from zero, zero to, to exactly, exactly. to, to exactly. one. Because mm-hmm. mm. they have to test and see, okay, we've hiked this much. How did it react in the market? Exactly. Mm-hmm. We've hiked Makes this sense. much. Mm-hmm. How did it? So you really have to think about that mm-hmm. and see if will if 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 they raise the rates let's say if the because the bond buying program will end end of february right mm-hmm. so in yeah, march if you get a hike by what magnitude is it 0 to 0.25 0.25 to 0.5 mm-hmm. is it 0 to 0.5 between 0.5 and 0.75 so mm-hmm. that's the question mm-hmm. that's the tough thing because mm-hmm. if they raise too much also they risk taking the economy into a recession mm-hmm. and we've seen that happen historically for example mm-hmm. in the 1970s when you had inflation again mm-hmm. uh, Paul Volcker who was the uh, Fed, uh, Fed yeah. chairman mm-hmm. by then mm-hmm. had to hike rates significantly mm-hmm. for him to bring back the, the inflation lower mm-hmm. and in that process he had to bring the economy into a recession and then he had to pump it again back to growth so mm-hmm. it's a cyclical thing that happens and now that's the question that many investors have or that is what is a trader you should be thinking mm-hmm. about growth uh, employment inflation and the and feds in terms of employment paul they study said i didn't really understand it okay yeah. i think there's quite a bit of room uh, sorry i think there's quite a bit of room to raise interest rates without, without threatening the labor market yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what does he mean exactly it means they think that if they raise rates a bit it still won't affect economic growth it still won't affect businesses yeah exactly because mm-hmm. you know first of all uh, let me just cut you short yeah. the main reason why uh, these people cut rates was actually for 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 uh for corporate for corporates to survive you see mm-hmm. the best example is this uh, let's say safaricom today we mm-hmm. are getting into a recession and safaricom let's say is firing everyone you see so the moment safaricom fires a lot of people already uh, let's say safaricom is one of the uh, top employers okay and uh, now they are facing that risk of uh, firing people so they need money you see yep so the fact that uh, now safaricom can go to 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 to, to banks and get loans at a almost a, a, like at a free rate mm-hmm. they do that you see so uh, uh, now as a safaricom goes borrows money comes uh, so these people who are, 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 who are to be fired mm-hmm. wanapata some luck wanabaki kwa job mm-hmm. so cuz safaricom now like has borrowed money so uh, our workers are now uh, still able to remain uh, uh, in employment and that is one way they counter that uh, unemployment uh, skyrocketing mm-hmm. now for 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 the fed they have a, a 4% target maximum like okay, like uh, like like don't like that uh, that should be the target less oh, than 4% no inflation uh, unemployment rate okay yeah. mm, like not more than 4% yeah. so right now it's, it's about a 3.6% the market uh, 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 back when covid started we went as high as 
25%. Yeah, it went too high. Yeah. So already for that, as I was saying, they've already countered that. Mm-hmm. So like raising rates to, uh, and already markets are too, too high from where the COVID, uh, uh, COVID high we were. For I think sure. our COVID high was that around, for the Dow was. Let me check. Yeah. So like markets are more than 100% actually from the COVID low. For the Dow, it was um, 29,000. 29,000. Just came shy. 30,000. Yeah, and uh, now we, we tapped a high of 37 roughly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, like markets are already too high from like where we were before the the, uh, uh, the COVID pandemic which basically brought all these uh, 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 interest rate, uh, low interest rate environments uh, and all this uh, pumping of money. Mm. So the fact that the market is already way, way ahead of where it was even before uh, a, a COVID started and I uh, you know like basically the markets, uh, if you look at the stock markets like S&P 500, It, it 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 covers basically like it, like it's an it's a summary of basically how the economy of the US is, uh, is working so basically when such a com- uh, when such an index is doing so good it means like uh companies are uh, a, a company stocks is rising basically mm-hmm. company stocks is like rise now they may rise even to uh, a high a high more than where they were before all this covid started so mm-hmm. basically trying to bring back the, uh, the normal market like where uh, where the market was before before all this uh, risk came into the market mm-hmm. so trying to bring back the market back to that 1.7% uh, uh interest rate mm-hmm. is 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 not now a big risk because mm-hmm. i think that is why they were very uh, very very skeptical on raising rates before even uh because me I remember before uh like back in uh, back in 2020 like before i understood the whole uh uh interest rate environment and how it works for me i knew that markets will make a a, a small pullback and continue with it Uh, 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 with the bearish trend mm-hmm. but the markets made new highs yeah, almost every other month expecting it to continue yeah, exactly mm-hmm. that high mm-hmm. so uh so, so for me i believe uh not okay, i don't know why they uh like personally why uh uh their reason but for me i think is uh, is that reason that the market is already uh, doing too good in terms of uh, where we are uh, mm-hmm. the position where we are at in terms of even uh, asset prices mm-hmm. uh the dollar the dollar had uh, had a, uh, a very tough year also so uh, now the fed is is trying to also make uh, the dollar as ken was saying sometimes in a recession you can choose to devalue your currency mm-hmm. but you also have to be very smart about bringing it back up mm-hmm. so uh, at least uh, it's quicker i think you remember and also like the point you asked ken about uh, inflation why do they have to control inflation because yeah. if you do, if you don't control inflation the risk of hyperinflation is now going to face you So yeah, basically inflation that will skyrocket the price yeah, exactly everything. exactly like the, it's uncontrollable even you you can't raise like you can't you can't do anything you can't raise rates to what whatever. happened was it what venezuela yeah, venezuela zimbabwe such countries yeah, yeah and it's because uh, such countries if you look at zimbabwe it was just a uh, stupid policies mm. like uh, that the president was always like why are you guys saying you don't have money see so we just print <laughs> you see so the fact that they were just yeah. printing money mm. um devalued the zimbabwean dollar so up. much eh? mm-hmm. until i uh, i think it, it was actually i think lifted off yeah, from from, from dollars, dollars yeah. mm-hmm. so such uh, such stuff so for me i think it's it's uh, you, you you try and see where is the um, uh, market environment and mm-hmm. see uh what are the risks like uh back in 2020 2021 if they had rose interest rates maybe there was that risk of what if they tamper again with growth but mm-hmm. for now i think the market has grown already too much Mm-hmm. See, so they need to also regulate that. Mm-hmm. So I think that is, I think the reason why the the uh, uh, Powell was saying they have room to raise rates, but not tamper with growth and unemployment. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. makes sense. And and at least you've touched on stocks and all that, and the labor market. I think the other important thing is commodities, mm-hmm. precious metals, oil, mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. Ever since COVID, that time we hit zero, negative. Okay, that time when there was no there was no demand, the supply was a lot because cutting supply also you can't just do it pop immediately. So it took some time. Mm-hmm. So during that time there was a lot of in uh, supply. So that time we saw uh, the oil market crashing to zero, and so far now it's back to around 85, yeah, 87, 87. more or less. During that time also when just the interest rate started, I'm even looking at the gold chart when that uh, 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 what is it that policy came through. We saw gold having a very strong bull run to all time highs of 2000 and let's say 2000 okay top to that level 2067 or something yeah it's actually yeah. 2068 2070 let's say uh, if we are being precise ever since that time we've had a correction market has come down i think the only thing as ken was saying earlier on today the only thing that has been rising till today is the oil market yep it reached a point gold market corrected and we've had sort of a sideways movement for the past a very long time okay mm-hmm. so in terms so my question to that is What 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 is the correlation of 
Because I remember, Ken, there was a time you were trying to teach me, but sometimes it's a bit confusing. The correlation between interest rates and oil and interest rates and gold. Okay. So if, if, you, if you're looking at uh, uh, the investing game or the game that we basically play, all of us, most most scenarios are not so easily explained. It's not always A plus B equals sure. to whatever. It's not fixed. It's not fixed. Sometimes mm. things change. Mm-hmm. You get So this time you could raise rates and you could knock off assets this other time you could raise rates and you couldn't knock off assets so it's a very very tough thing to know mm-hmm. what will really really happen if you do a certain thing but mm-hmm. there are certain principles which still hold uh, despite the actions that you For take sure. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but now if you look at a market like gold let's start with gold mm-hmm. gold is inversely inversely correlated to what happens with rates why mm-hmm. uh gold is not a is not an asset that has any productive utility you 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 can't say that gold True. is valuable just because it makes jewels or mm-hmm. gold is valuable it doesn't have any utility that makes it valuable it doesn't yield anything doesn't just because dividends. you have gold somewhere in a room does not mean if it doesn't appreciate in price you can't come and remove anything but if you look at other assets for example stocks are a representation of companies and companies have some utility have some production if you look at uh, land it's a an asset that has some utility. So gold's value came from what? It came from a hedge against things like inflation, against periods of uh, recessions. So gold was an, uh, a hedge against weak currencies. So initially we had the gold standard. Yeah. Where for you to print money you had to back it up with some gold bullion. Amount of gold. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But now we came off that. And when we came off that investors started using gold as a hedge against some risks that are contained in the market because gold has intrinsic value. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And people call it uh, gold's money. Like mm-hmm. you can it's it's common it's used everywhere it was used for exactly years. for years so it's a very very important asset when you look at it but how does it behave historically any time mm-hmm. we've seen a rate hike what does a rate hike mean a rate hike basically means that the dollar is likely to yield more so if you are if 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 you ha- if you give out dollars uh if i give you 100 dollars at 0.1 rates then i take it to 2% i'm basically making more money if i have dollars mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. So as rates go up the do- value of the dollar goes higher right mm-hmm. if the value of the dollar goes higher gold has to go lower mm-hmm. why first of all gold is priced in in dollars if the dollar is valuable gold has to go lower yeah. right yeah. Mm-hmm. that's one mm-hmm. two the dollar is yielding gold is not yielding what will happen people will take more money into dollar dollar cash if capital is moving from one asset to another one what really happens mm-hmm. the market goes down mm-hmm. you get mm-hmm. so those are some of the reasons if things are going well if the economy is doing so well mm-hmm. and no one is looking to have their money secure in a certain place things are going so well mm-hmm. and you know human nature when things are going so well no one thinks about when things will start going poorly yeah. only the smart people mm-hmm. that's why very few people make money in the long run in this mm-hmm. game mm-hmm. it's because you have to do exactly the opposite of what the majority of the people will do Consensus. exactly so when things are going so well everyone is optimistic things are going so well you'll find assets like gold selling very cheaply mm. and the people who'll buy them during those periods are the ones who'll benefit when things start going badly right. in the long term in the long term but the reverse also happens when things have gone so badly for some time and now things have started going so well you need to reverse that so it's always about capital moving from one asset to another Mm-hmm. Right? Exactly. Exactly. So like now you've seen capital now is moving away from precious metals, assets like those and moving now more into other assets like the dollar. So the dollar is likely to become very very valuable as rates start going higher. The dollar is one of the most uh the the, the dollar is one of the most valuable assets during mm-hmm. that period. Bonds, what you guys were asking me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is a bond? It's basically a, it's it's a it's a coupon that you're going to get, right? And you're mm-hmm. given it at a rate. So if rates are going high it means the bond prices have to go lower but the bond yield has to go higher. higher. And that's why you can see like 10 year yields have gone higher mm-hmm. over the last few uh, months since the dollar started going higher yields have also been going higher. Mm-hmm. That means the markets are pricing in a rate hike. Mm-hmm. But now when you come to an asset like oil, oil is an asset that is very very complex. Different. Exactly, very mm-hmm. different. It's a commodity that just works on its own. Mm-hmm. Uh one oil is affected by factors of politics a lot. Mm-hmm. So if you look at the 2020 reason why oil went to zero was basically the war between Saudi Arabia and Russia. the other nations exactly when they were fighting over production and mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia decided we're going to just open our taps and mm-hmm. we don't care anymore and mm-hmm. oil had 
to go all the way to zero but mm-hmm. when they came back and agreed on some things you're going to cut production to this level you're going mm-hmm. to do this oil started coming got back got a recovery got a recovery right mm-hmm. two inflation mm-hmm. what's the best indicator of inflation it's the oil market yep because mm-hmm. gas prices affect everything mm-hmm. for food to get to you someone has to use gas for the car to transport it and transport it yeah transport yeah production in the whatever. factory oil is being Railroad. used railroads so, Everything oil. is dependent on oil. Mm-hmm. And if inflation is going high, there's no way oil prices will go no. down. So the oil prices increase. Exactly. Because um because the oil tra- I mean, the goods have increased in price. Exactly. So also the oil price be na increase. Oil suit. Mm-hmm. In fact, oil prices will first increase, then the goods will increase, okay. then inflation will come. So it's more expensive now to transport something. So, so ex- Increase exactly. the price of so the goods. Increase the price so of the goods. Even cost and effect. Cost and effect. Okay. Exactly. And so oil now that is the part of the reason why oil is okay. trading makes so sense, high. Makes sense. Makes also sense. now there's the geopolitical risks. Mm-hmm. There's the war between Russia and Ukraine. Oil mm-hmm. is also a market that is concentrated in only few countries. Uh, you look at countries like Saudi Arabia, Russia, uh, Russia, States. Russia. States. Russia produces oil. Yeah. yeah. One yeah, of yeah, the yeah. biggest. One of the yeah, biggest producers. Think number two. Yep. After Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Also there's the risk of a war. During mm. times of war oil becomes very 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 valuable. Oh it does. Yeah. yeah. Times of war. Very, yeah. yeah. Why? Logistics becomes tougher. Exactly. Mm. Mm. Even when times of so, war are yeah. there the countries which are fighting are likely to stifle production. Production is exactly. not likely to yeah. continue as it was in the normal locations. A mm. war basically makes everything go to zero stand like still. stand still. Things don't just move. Risk assets sell off. Gold is the best performing asset during such times. You mm-hmm. get. So during now, when you have tensions between countries which are oil producing nations, then we are likely to see oil prices going very, very high. For example, just before the 2020 collapse started, mm-hmm. I remember there was a spike from about 50 something to about 65 dollars a barrel mm-hmm. when Saudi Arabia was attacked by a certain country. So when such things happen, we are likely to see oil prices going higher. Mm. But the current oil price is basically inflation and the geopolitical risks that are there. As long as inflation is going higher, mm-hmm. oil will keep on moving higher. Okay, but that's new. I didn't know. So, war makes oil more... Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, of course, yeah. Okay. Also, also the, the last point Ken was saying on gold, gold is, is, is somehow paired to the dollar. Oil is oil. Like, oil is a barrel. Mm. One barrel of yep. oil for $75. dollars not one dollar for... Not one, not one barrel for this dollars. You see, mm-hmm. exactly. So it's it's uh it's it's an in, like it's an individual asset. Mm-hmm. So uh like Haina Haina so much uh basically Haina the like like the partner to to compete with. See, mm-hmm. so it can be very very directional. Mm-hmm. So oil can just go low and low and low and low, Ew. or it Past can go zero. high and high and high and without high any major high, correction. Exactly, without any major corrections, because it's like it's an individual asset. You go to oil peke peke. You see. Uh, like right now you saw uh, yesterday uh, uh, when dollar uh, ha- uh, uh, had a spike uh, a spike higher uh, uh, gold mm-hmm. went down because mm-hmm. it's paired to the USD you see mm-hmm. but oil is the US oil not USD oil mm, it's the US oil fixed. yeah US oil you see so they're measuring so, yeah, it on the yeah, barrier yeah, exactly so like how your competitiveness of uh, how uh, uh, where is the dollar and uh, where uh, where is oil so mm. it, like it can just uh, 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 be on its own price we go to dunia mm. yake Mm. Yeah, so th- that is the difference between like, oil and uh, actually most people yeah. don't understand su- a- 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 such things trading oil actually yeah. even for me it took me almost four years mm. to come and understand uh, you've blown account with oil yeah, yeah, yeah. like directional markets and all that stuff uh, but, uh, you need to know your system and know which markets they don't work in and which markets they work in better so mm. such stuff is very important like understand an asset to see mm. trade to be just because you are taught technicals <laughs> and technicals work everywhere, everywhere. markets perform differently mm-hmm. like the same way we don't analyze like we don't trade cryptos the same way we trade forex for sure for sure yeah, yeah, like you can't just take your candlesticks knowledge to every market mm-hmm. so you have to also have that a uh, deep knowledge of how this market is structured how mm-hmm. it works the power that push prices on the market mm-hmm. like inflation and such stuff so it's very important to get this knowledge and we always are uh, we always always are uh, Make sure in our classes we cover all this. Like mm-hmm. in fundamentals, you learn all this. Everything we've talked about in this podcast, from what the the Federal Reserve Chairman was saying yesterday about uh, inflation, inflation. and un- unemployment, uh, interest rate rises. Because I think most people actually think fundamentals is very complex. Mm-hmm. But if you just understand fundamentals, like 
don't understand also too much fundamentals you are there in manufacturing <laughs> code code sijui everything yeah, actually for me as i teach as i teach fundamentals uh in uh in 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 our classes i always focus on the personal understanding interest rates yeah this is the, the main one, uh, the main one. Mm-hmm. interest rate and employment and in, uh, inflation because they they are all correlated mm-hmm. so you have to understand uh, all the three but this major uh some of these other fundamentals they'll just be there for the noises mm-hmm. they can't drive markets like yesterday we saw mm-hmm. gold d- drop about 400 points mm-hmm. so it's a, a, such movements will always happen uh, mm-hmm. on on big news like interest rates mm-hmm. and that's what we majorly focus on people understanding do you understand how interest rates affect markets mm-hmm. and most people come to that 99% they don't know are understanding how uh interest rate affects market and uh, uh, all the other uh, which assets. is very important which is very important yes mm-hmm. and since yeah. you're touching on that point of of oil and all mm-hmm. Ukraine and Russia what the hell is going on mm-hmm. so uh in UK and Russia it's it's uh actually it's not a uh, a uh, 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 it's just speculations that uh cuz uh, uh, Russians have have uh, uh, have put a camp of of uh, 100,000 troops <laughs> serious yes just well, along the, the Ukrainian border and they are, they are bordering one yeah, another yeah they are bordering one okay. another yes you told me yesterday Ukraine was part of Ra- used to yeah, yeah, it was a part of Russia back in think uh just before world war 1 yeah, yeah yeah during the soviet union time just mm-hmm. before uh, after world war 1 or, or before world war 2 mm-hmm. so they, uh, they, they, uh, they used to be part of of uh, so like they border russia to the east mm-hmm. and they border europe to the west so okay uh when 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 ukraine get uh, got out of uh, uh russia the same way britain got out of uh, euro euro mm. they joined uh the eurozone Oh, Ukraine. Yes. Okay, like they joined the uh, uh, not basically the eurozone but they joined the there's this thing called the NATO, National Alliance, National Alliance Treaty Organization. Okay. It's a military organization for basically 20 uh, 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 more, uh more companies in the uh, sorry, uh, more more countries in the EU. Mm-hmm. So Ukraine joined uh joined uh the NATO. Mm-hmm. So they were basically their military was totally different from from uh from uh Russia. Mm-hmm. But Russia didn't want like that move to happen. Mm-hmm. They didn't want uh Ukraine to give more power to the uh, to the west. Mm-hmm. They wanted power to be uh, to come to the east. So they they've always had that tension. Mm-hmm. And now n- and now that uh Putin has put that uh has put that uh camps on the border, mm-hmm. he may create too like no one and uh, no one in the and the Ukrainian defense force MSM we are planning anything. Actually MSM they don't have any plan to do anything. Mm-hmm. But just that, that that's uh, people are speculating that they are planning maybe to to invade uh, Ukraine and maybe take attack them over again. So that is uh, uh and for that now actually the biggest risk now is not even Ukraine. I think Ukraine don't have so much power to fight Russia. Of course, eh, Russia now huge, yeah. is the threat from Bi- uh uh uh, uh Biden. Okay. So Biden is very very strict about even one one mse moja tu akiingia ukraine <laughs> just one army wo mm. inaanza amesema tu yani i'm daring putin to try you see i'm daring putin has, to try he has already mm. dropped also some yeah, soldiers yeah so some soldiers are also Ooh, deployed there the biden exactly so they are very very ready for war yeah. if you know you know like sometimes uh, most times you don't announce no no announcing it na kuja so yeah, that's yeah. why russia i just say anything mm. maybe they're just planning it under water then they ambush mm. but now the uh, uh, the states so, uh, so that move and they were very uh, uh, cautious on warning russia not to to do anything so they are planning on on uh, full full sanctions so they've also planned sanctions mm, full sanctions mm-hmm. on russia sanctions. and not only us EU sanctions also, were meaning what pulling out a few things No, like sanctions is basically you're making countries it difficult are told not to trade with you yeah. and if you're trading with this country we are not going to offer you our services exactly mm. that's what i'm saying exactly. yeah. pulling out mm. some services from yeah. some yeah. benefits yeah. that they have yeah. okay yeah. so that is now the biggest risk if if now uh, you see now russia is one of the biggest oil producers now there's this war us is also coming into a war because russia is also a superpower mm. so if they if they, if they just uh, 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 if this war starts maybe if they, if it starts it it will heighten the geopolitical risks in the markets So they already heightened. Yes, exactly. You <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it will be heightened twice now even more. If so they start a war I think it's basically confirmation that these things are just getting out of hand. Exactly, yeah, exactly. It. And now that will be a whole other scenario for the markets. Like markets will have now like I don't have a good uh, analysis of maybe what markets will happen mm-hmm. of how uh, the markets will react to the war. But now that is uh, like I'm still getting uh, in touch with uh, the happenings because it's something that it's uh, among the developing news <laughs> <laughs> coming up, coming yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah, so uh, oh, okay. that, that's basically the tension, and I think that's also one of the main reasons why oil is not uh, tinkering; it's strong. Yeah. Yep. 
terms of war. Yep. Yep. Okay. A good point, good point. So, at least you've explained that. Um another another sector we need to touch is cryptocurrencies. Yeah, so yep. <laughs> Something that's very important. We've explained cryptocurrencies. We have a podcast that we did an episode. So you can go there. We've explained what cryptocurrencies are. You can just are. drop the link below for people yeah, to look we'll for it. Yeah, we'll drop it below. But it's very important. Go watch it so that we don't waste time going back into it. But I think something <coughs> that's important. For the first, ever since COVID, yeah, many people have entered these games. We've had online gurus. You know, uh, when the stimulus came, everyone is investing and everyone, maybe everyone when, uh, in a bull market, as you say, everyone is a genius. People made yep. money, a lot of money. And of course, when people make money, it causes more effect, FOMO. So more people continue investing and they start investing at the wrong time. So I remember something that's with the, the advantage, like us, we're, we're heavily invested in cryptos as well. And I remember um, when, uh, when COVID, when not COVID, last year, when the good thing about us at least with our approach we understand fundamentals and what we're just talking about interest rates how they affect all financial assets as a whole yep. so luckily last year when we were coming towards the end of last year uh ken mentioned i remember we sold mo- all our cryptocurrencies and that time it was just around that time when they were starting to talk about tapering interest rates coming back in and that time we were at tops I yep. remember Bitcoin was at 63,000. I remember I sold all of them there. We had things like XRP at 1.5. Uh, Ethereum was at 4,500 4, 4, there. Yeah. Almost hit 5K. So during that time, we were like, okay, if markets... Now, Ken came up with the idea because I remember back then when we were doing analysis, I came up with an analysis, did a few background checks on a few things and we were able to invest. Now, coming out, Ken came up with the idea and said, okay, since these things are going to be factored in, there'll be an effect... In the market. market. And I think many people don't have this background understanding of how interest rates affect the market. So it was a good timing for us. And we came out at the very tops. Okay. And now cryptocurrencies are down over 50%. Yep. Yeah, most of them. Most of them. Ethereum was at 5,000. Now we've been seeing 2,300. Uh, Bitcoin hit 65,000. Now we're back to 33,000, 31,000. Most, most others even down 90%. Mm. Things like Filecoin. You know, Polka dot is down, Polka, I think, 80%. Yeah, this one that everyone was investing, which I still don't have, I still am very against Dogecoin. That thing is down, down crazy. So LAN is also down. Okay, so most across the board, um, 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 Bitcoin acts as the benchmark and most of them follow how Bitcoin goes, okay? Yeah. So since that downturn has been happening, it's very important to understand that most of the other altcoins have followed suit. But something that's been happening on the other side, and if you look at uh, the markets and what's happening, there's a market that hasn't been really affected that much, which is NFTs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So NFTs, non-fungible tokens, mostly, uh, basically, they are uh, digital uh, ownership of properties, mostly known for the art market. And I think something, because I've been doing a little bit of research on art. If you remember, I opened an account with Masterworks, mm-hmm. did an interview, passed it. So I've been doing a little of research of art. So as as a rule of thumb, okay, when it comes to art, okay, um. Art is mainly an investment done for... I'll, so I'll come down to the NFTs. I'll come to why I'm giving this point. Art is, a, is mostly an investment for rich people, mm-hmm. billionaires, okay? Trillionaires. And <laughs> trillionaires, okay? Because <laughs> you'll find art going for Picasso's or uh, Michel... I mean, Michelangelo. Things go for $100 million, $50 million. So it's not for the ordinary person. So it's people who are investing money. in this are billionaires. Yep. So um, Citigroup... Okay, did a research. They did a study that gave a correlation of art to the S and P 500 as negative 0.1. So just to explain the correlation factor, so we have a scale of negative one mm-hmm. to plus one. Mm-hmm. Okay, if any asset is at negative one, it means negative correlation. Negative correlation. If one is going up, this one must go down. Okay. Okay. If we're at plus one, it means if this one is going up, this one is going up. If it's going down, we're going down. So they're very highly correlated. If we're at zero, it's it's in the middle. It's not being affected. Okay? I know a correlation. Like it's totally out. Oh. If this one is being affected, this one is Maybe not being affected. Yeah. So sort of like what we're talking about when we're talking about... Now this is where hedging comes in. When one asset you want to go up and you see this one... Let's say one is going to go down and you see this one can rise mm-hmm. in price, mm-hmm. you can put it there. Or another thing you can put... You can hedge against something that has no correlation. 
you yeah. won't lose any value tabaki okay, to yeah, yeah. when a lot of market is being affected so as i was saying so city group did a year over the past 40 years smp and art have had a 0.1 correlation so meaning when smp goes up this other one is not really affected and if it's affected art will go down, down okay and if the opposite happens this other one will go up but kidogo too it's at mm-hmm. 0.1 okay so and correlation lowers investors risk profile in in the portfolio so what normally ha- so now with what is happening in the art now art there's sort of what may think or more or less nfts let's now talk about nfts what personally i think is happening in the nft space wait just before we go to nfts i want to get your point on uh, the correlation yeah so i think snp over the last 40 years we've been in a bull a bull market mm-hmm. so does that mean art has been in a bearish market mm-hmm. it means it's not being affected It's at 0.1. If it was at negative 1, oh, you say it was opposite. Negative or positive 0.1. I said it's at negative 0.1. Mm-hmm. So it's being affected kidogo to or let's say it's mostly at 0. If you look at it, it's it's ranging around 0. So if S&P whatever is going up down, this one is not really being affected. So what is the correlation is between R0? 0. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. It's right, very right. low. Okay. The correlation is low. So S&P whatever happens, R to go to dunia yake. Mm-hmm. Okay, different okay, assets. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to NFTs personally what I think is happening in NFTs there's a lot of rush there's a lot of craze there okay I'm not to say that it's in a bubble but I think many people are investing in it without proper understanding I believe NFTs will be a very big thing mm-hmm. it's it's going to be the future it's, it's a lot like what we were discussing last week you can watch last week's video towards the end we talked a bit about NFTs but personally there's a lot of rush and people just jumping into it not understanding how markets actually work okay mm-hmm. I'm not yet deep into NFTs and all that but what I'm looking at in the markets the sort of a rush and sort of not understanding everyone is buying I have friends who are just buying just for the sake of buying I need an NFT I remember when Bitcoin was surging everyone just wanted to buy they don't care what price just get me in oh, right now most, crying. most of them are crying okay <laughs> and those this those this uh this guy um Omar some guy we follow he said uh, he he tweeted gold drops people say healthy correction stocks drop healthy correction real estate drops healthy correction bitcoin drops it's a scam see <laughs> i told you okay <laughs> so so normally we now now when it comes to cryptocurrencies and nfts so that's just a point i have on nfts and why maybe maybe to a sort of point nfts have not really reacted to that but the fact that also people are really rushing to it without understanding is sort of we're just saying it's so 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 oh, yeah, maybe yeah, later yeah. on it will catch up get a bit of correction because right now you remember i was showing you guys yesterday this this nfts that was going for one dollar and it's about 400 yeah, 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 yeah. immediately so, okay, they're so. sold out and in a few days they're already at 400 that's yeah. a 400x return yeah. increase okay so cryptocurrencies now if i come back to cryptocurrencies at least that one we understand it a bit well and i remember we've had a like most markets that we're normally looking at so if i if i'm able to project a few things that i'm looking into the year it's been very good for the past few months as we were discussing us sitting on things like stable coins usdt usdc sort of like sitting on dollar yeah on the dollar yeah because they are more or less correlated uh with the dollar um now with what is happening now that we have a, we had a few drop remember as i said earlier on we sold at a, we sold at tops. Yeah, tops most markets now are down about 90 80%. I'm not to say that it's just blindly you go by the dip, okay? But understanding how markets are going to work and how uh it's a long-term investment. Yeah. So when we're investing in crypto, we're not looking at okay, I need to make money like a like a trade. I'll take a trade that'll come out in the next few days, few weeks, few hours maybe. Investing in crypto, we're taking a long-term bet yeah, in the utility of this currency. So not like some other people have had a talks with a lot of people who just buy I remember there's a friend of mine uh, said they just buy they look at what is hot in the market they buy into it okay. <laughs> what's trending they, yeah, what's trending what's trending they see dogecoin they buy they, and they made money right. they made money so the fact that they making actually, you know do you know actually uh, in, in the funny corner, uh-huh. those guys who follow Elon Musk actually have made so much money they have cuz every time <laughs> they the last it, two weeks they lose all yes, exactly <laughs> they, lose, they lose all of it yeah. the last two times the last two times i think um like uh, i think the last two days i think on my, on, on on tuesday elon musk, elon musk said um McDonald's should should mm. start using uh, Dogecoin. Dogecoin and he'll he, he'll have a happy meal at <laughs> at the shop. And that shit rocketed 9%. If you After that quick, news. Hey, immediately 15 minute candle 9%. I, I saw that news but nine. I didn't see how market exactly. Reacted. So like 
Serious? Ah, ni strategy ya watu hapa. Ile long term strategy. Yeah, that's 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 not how markets work. There's a rule of how markets work and they don't work because one person said do this or do that. So 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 good point. So my point was to say what? Um what was I saying? Uh cryptocurrencies. So yeah, so I'm looking so yeah. So we sold the tops now we're looking to get uh a few positions in. Position in. Not fully 100% because mm-hmm. we're still looking at a lot of interest rates bad as janza in the serious true, 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 but market already factored a lot of that into the markets mm-hmm. and we've seen a lot of drops okay so during that we do a lot of dollar cost averaging getting into the markets at different prices intervals okay so spreading out your money and preparing to enter so that's why it's very important to always have cash ready and i, I normally listen oliari and he's normally sitting i think on about 20% cash Okay most yeah. of the time in his mutual fund because he's always anticipating whenever Investments. an opportunity comes be ready to invest in it like if you don't have cash and you're fully invested you won't make that much money so i think it's something it's a you good g- rule of thumb by the way yeah yeah it's a rule of thumb so in a Actually, portfolio you should also have cash yeah, yeah you should yeah, always is, always yeah, have cash, cash. that one yeah. is very important okay. have cash prepare because mm. you never know something can just happen even tomorrow to see me away and then True. like you're saying knock off a lot no, of no, assets no <laughs> knock off assets so as a rule of thumb as kenna said yeah always have some cash ready to invest uh in your some portfolio money. yeah in your portfolio it's a good it's a good plan okay so so in terms of what i'm seeing in cryptocurrencies uh, as we are talking about the outlook for 2022 i think we've had that good drop okay we are yet to continue seeing as we said we are paying a lot of attention to interest rates just to see what is going to happen and then we continue investing in that long term of course okay and see how we can make money but i believe i believe there's opportunities not just in any coin but the ones that have utility the ones that are doing a lot of change like ethereum Ethereum is very strong why is that because things like NFTs are running on the Ethereum blockchain okay yeah. smart contracts yeah. on the Ethereum blockchain gold is what is commonly termed as the digital digital gold mm-hmm. one because it has um, a limited supply okay among many other things okay so yeah. so it's very important to pay attention to this ones i believe they're going to have utility so also us are paying attention to them i think this year later on we might have a crypto course Yeah 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 we are, we are, we are working on a crypto course just to show you the basics okay not as signals not as to tell you what to buy what not to buy but how to do research and how to get this many coins so very soon you'll be seeing us with a crypto course coming out soon at least personally like what we do at financial hub we don't rush into things if like the way we entered into forex we took some time to understand it then we came out yeah. okay cryptocurrencies we've been in cryptocurrencies since 2018 i know people who started in 2021 january in 2021 towards the end followers they have a lot of followers just because they're mm-hmm. talking about understanding this space as yeah. we've been really quiet on this space but we've made good returns on it and i think it's time for us to come out and help you guys as we've yep. been doing with the forex industry also invest in that side so those are my few takes on cryptocurrencies how low do you think uh, bitcoin will go i think we can tap 20 20 me i think we can tap 10 10 yes 10 yes <laughs> the market will stay down for a while I, i i believe also i believe we can we can we can have a long yeah but as you say this is personal chukwe kama investment advice as i tell us things so my personal <laughs> views in the market by 20 i'll go make them that 10 and then by 20 you can go to 10 10 hey or you can buy it, tell people to buy 20 shuke add 10 that gets down 50% yeah exactly yeah you should have a stomach for that but yeah um because for me i've come to learn one thing about markets is that markets can actually be very very rational yeah and one one rule of thumb mm. about markets is markets will always do that which will hurt it most exactly people. and for the market to shed off <laughs> oh, I say what email, email, like, but is the market really intended to hurt anyone like does it really <laughs> okay. care who no. you are <laughs> yeah, no, it, doesn't, it doesn't care if you are a billionaire it doesn't the right, care if the you right don't have statement money. for that is uh, markets will often go to extremes where people but don't expect will, uh, exactly. i'm still with my point exactly. markets will do what will hurt most people because okay. most people will be on the wrong side exactly that's true it's <laughs> true most people will be on the wrong so you're saying something like uh, like the market will have to shed off all these people who have joined the bandwagon without <laughs> understanding it you are too you are too to the same uh, way the same way to to to, 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 to 1999 to 2003 kuna wasi walikuwa hapa but very few remained sure, sure, exactly sure. so, so all so, those fortunes mm. they must go back where they be no yeah. yeah. those who are it's... competent no the one who is competent because <laughs> yeah, okay. most people are not competent and they're playing this game mm. they didn't mm. take enough time to develop that competence so the minute you're playing a game 
and you're playing against people who are competent you may beat them in the short run but in the long term mm-hmm. man yeah, yeah. how to get you they'll get you mm-hmm. they'll get you bad so exactly obviously so. markets will have to just give money to those people who understand what is happening mm-hmm. And that's that's a rule of thumb. Because <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. It is C'est what it is. Yeah, exactly. C'est la vie, man. Take your it time and learn how to play the game in the right way, mm-hmm. rather than just jumping. So in. It's a long-term game. Exactly. exactly. That's the Any financial market you're getting into, mm. it's a long-term, long-term, long-term game. Because yeah. mm. sure. like like I was I was today I was reading another uh, memo by what Marx it's titled mm. "Selling Out." So selling out. Yeah, he's he's actually asking the question: When should you? Uh, particularly sell an asset after you've bought it is it when it has just gone up is it when it's going down like what what is the right what time percentage? for you exactly to to sell an asset he gives an example of a, a stock a stock like amazon uh, so if you bought amazon and it came public in 1990 you'd have bought it at five dollars uh, but in no in late 1990s 1990 something 96 97 i'm not yeah, sure i think seven exactly i would have bought it at five dollars at the height of the dot com bubble amazon was trading at 250 300 around those prices but it went back all the way to 6 dollars 6 yeah from 200 from 200 it has to a cut at a 5 at a 5 yeah yeah we don't get to 5 yeah exactly mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Amazon, like you saying market has to clear out these people yeah. like or me at blood on the streets 5 was basically march march 2020 you at 5000 true yeah. so less true. than 2 years don't know okay so okay <laughs> <laughs> you think what okay. anyway, so so amazon then went back to $6 right but now amazon is trading at 3300 so who bought amazon at 5 and was holding it all the way to 250 came back to 6 and then still held it all the way to 3000 The fact that it fell to six means most people sold. Exactly. Mm. Most people so sold. That's Funny. the difficulty yeah. of the investing game. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's the difficulty. Like, that's the challenge. Extreme exactly. And come back. And come back. Extreme on both sides. Exactly. You could do. You could do. Now, unasema tu sitoi. Because if you bought like five, I was thinking about it. If you had put in like a thousand dollars at five, five dollars per share. You have about 200. Yeah, you'd have about 200 shares. Meaning when it got to 250, you'd have about 40,000. So yeah, from your thousand dollars you'll have 40, made 4 000. million, right? Mm-hmm. Who in his right mind is willing to just say, "Hey, for million one, we'll watch it guy to go. go back to a thousand." Exactly. And then it it moves from 4 million back to your thousand dollars and you still say, "I'll start sell out." Just to hold the company to talk up as the guys who are working in the company. Ah, true. Mm-hmm. But no, I think honest. the argument of trading the argument speculation. of speculation is something that you should take so much time to develop mm-hmm. and it takes time exactly there are mm-hmm. very many fine details that you need to perfect for you to timing markets is hard so how do you handle that very hard making money in the markets is hard so how do you handle that uh beating other people that you're competing with is hard so how do you handle all those things it's a complex game you really have to sit down and think about it before you start playing it just so that's because what, that's what Howard Max concluded yeah he never gave you a clear answer <coughs> when to sell or when not to sell <laughs> he actually showed you how hard it is to decide when to sell out whether things are going up or whether things are going down mm-hmm. that was the basic idea that i got from that memo mm-hmm. it's extremely difficult to just hold an asset when it's gone up extremely and hold an asset when it's gone down extremely The emotional nature is likely to just come in and try to tamper with those things and mm-hmm. it's because people tamper with those things that they go to the extremes because like right now if you bought at 55000 bitcoin say that 7000 unaweza kuona whole like in tumbo i feel vizuri kabisa your stomach mm-hmm. is just feeling ai mm-hmm. when it goes to 25 it becomes worse the minute it gets to 15 you're like i can't take it anymore <laughs> let me just liquidate at this point yeah and it goes all the way to 5 and then comes back take your 55000 out goes all the way to 150000 yeah. mm-hmm. so you really have to be mm-hmm. but i think for uh, for that question i think uh, for me like if i was asked that question i think it will it will it will mostly depend on my objectives exactly that's a very good yeah, way for, to yeah, start yeah, with sure investment yeah. you have, have to, to be have in line with your investments na ujura talk up that is the first thing and targets mm-hmm. and targets because mm-hmm. yeah. so, i remember and while you're doing that objectively 
have you, okay just finish your point i'll come to it yeah, okay as you're doing that objectively that, yeah. as you have certain targets and all you need to adapt to the market exactly yeah, like what we did i remember us we had targets of bitcoin 100,000 uh, 100,000 plus i remember xrp we had targets of 3 dollars 5 dollars you guys have the acumen that's the point that you guys are forgetting <laughs> mm. you guys have invested time to understand what is really happening in markets like mm. you know if market conditions change they're likely to affect asset prices in this way mm-hmm. we know if certain policies come in you're likely to see at- asset prices doing a certain mm-hmm. thing right so basically if you know before you take a trade you should have an objective mm-hmm. now yeah, want yeah, you to imagine sure. the guy who doesn't have that knowledge i was get to bitcoin in a panda eh aganua my friend you see how Stop. difficult it is for yeah, such a person, to make money. person. exactly yeah. the average man has a very difficult life making money in the market mm. and, uh, and that question also is difficult because getting in is always easy getting sure. out is the hardest getting thing. outside is the hardest yep jama sa lingia let's say ara ara loss lingia 35k market but it went to 65 so nashanga at some point i had money yeah, but now i don't <laughs> now i don't in fact i'm going to negative territory <laughs> negative man. so <laughs> <laughs> So like for that person to put so, and it's difficult for him to come out of either side. Yeah. Yeah. So when he's winning yeah. and when he's losing. Exactly. Yeah. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. I can lose attack is cut out. And that okay at least. It's going to 28, 25. Where should I come out? Kwanza put no na sema acha tu rudi 35. Ndatoka. I come back. I don't lose money. So the markets. Chenga chenga. The markets need tricky sana. And it's all about goes goes down to the basic principle of trading psychology decision making yep unapata sana imekuwa ngumu sana for this person to make a decision to have come out to click sell mm. simple yani haita ichukui nguvu mm-hmm. kulima ama you know mm-hmm. some jobs are hard but your mm-hmm. job kadu mmeambiwa to sell this asset umeshindo na see you have to go and tell tell this person no should i sell it to you liquidity iko hapo mm-hmm. is someone to buy mm-hmm. but you can't do it mm-hmm. you can't make a decision to come out mm-hmm. so that thing is very very psychologically challenging even a uh, uh especially like uh, for me i see it on uh, 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 new traders even just a forex i'm saying get trade yes but that's uh, an easy objective where will i come out where will i not come out exactly and ngoja markets is in pay is in the your peeps you can a positive you know the good you know the good like when i'm teaching i always tell people okay let's run a simulation mm-hmm. so you take a trade Now, like when you have a trade it can go like 100 peeps it traces 50 then completes mm-hmm. the move mm-hmm. I saw a 99.9% say they can't hold that 50% retracement. Nilikuwa na 2000 dollars can. Nione merudi imekuwa 1000 tena. Siwezi. Mhm. Wacha nitoke hapo 2000. But the minute you're playing the game like that, mm-hmm. place yourself in the basket of losers. Mm-hmm. You can't win at this game. You get. You have to train yourself to see a thousand getting to 2000, 2000 going back to 500, 500 going back to positive territory. Or 2000 even going into losses mm, exactly. sure. you must be very very comfortable mm-hmm. the volatility of the markets exactly mm-hmm. so i always conclude that for you to become a good trader you must be very comfortable with discomfort mm-hmm. like just being uncom- don't manage anxiety you'll be anxious but don't manage it just mm-hmm. ride it out mm-hmm. over time you'll learn and you'll stop being as anxious mm-hmm. but the minute you're trading and kenda juu unataka kukua una book your profit kenda chini unataka ku hope itarudi just think about what will happen in the long Cause, run cuz in in terms of that i remember like especially when markets were rising cryptocurrencies so since everyone is jumping into it i remember a few friends of ours telling us kali but will you we buy this one yeah. we buy this one right it, now it they're was, not telling you Solana was at 50 dollars <laughs> no one is telling buy, you to buy something <laughs> I'm wondering um say minority my advice look this is the cryptos we're looking at it has utility but somewhere the along the way the, <laughs> the student the master. A, a core master Caliba I told you you missed on that one so then then they, they think that they know they said ah, let me do it for myself now yep. at, at, now may play the game Caliba understand this stuff bro most of those people right now quite and that's not to say that we've not lost we I remember we've held many markets that have gone down more than 50%. Yep. Okay. We will buy level I remember like when we were buying XRP, the time I think I even bought at 0.5. That thing went down to 0.1. I remember that was the low. Finua, <laughs> 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 finua. It just long term yeah, game. I think that's that's the difference between us and 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 the and the average person that you're describing. For you a decline lower is an opportunity. True. It's not you in losses it's i should be putting capital to work more capital exactly. and that's what we did exactly more more but for another person 
the markets being down is a threat to their <laughs> bank account mm-hmm. it's no longer an opportunity boss nilikuwa ni make up 1 million sasa imefika 500 aje ikifika 300 attack tena so when you're investing there is a lot that goes into that process and if that process is not good do not expect the outcome to be good mm-hmm. exactly yep take your time do your research mm-hmm. come for our courses read books interact with people who've done it mm-hmm. learn the game and you can go out and make your money but the minute you want to cheat <laughs> you want to make the money without going through the process yeah then you'll understand that markets Don't also kapo tumbele kapo mbele so you won't uh, you can't just cheat that's that's the basic idea you just mm-hmm. can't cheat some things about markets mm-hmm. yep Okay and as as we are coming to a conclusion I think we've talked about most things I think <laughs> one thing we can we can touch a bit a bit before before we finish since we're talking as market as a macro okay Kenya mm-hmm. Kenya shilling and wow. and what is around the, <laughs> the <Wow>. industry <laughs> we've seen as we were saying Taras last week in the podcast we've seen the shilling dropping ever since Onye came in Yes, uh, Uhuru, uh, President Uhuru Kenya his excellency since jubilee came in we've seen the dollar I remember when the, when he came in the dollar was at 85 one yeah. one dollar to Kenya shilling was trading at 85 now we are trading at 115 around 115 on 18 even on so, some masks yeah so just think about this so just to explain it a bit well so that you can understand the dangers of why this price is going up look let's say you're in employment you're earning 50,000 okay and and 50,000 Kenya shilling so back then so back then if you could buy a good for whatever price inge kwa tuseme something like a good example we all remember coke bottle used to be like at 20 bob tambo when we were young 15, coming, 15 bob mm. right now they go for what 35 35 the 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 cheaper bottle yes yeah? 35 that means if you're still earning 50000 okay uko kwa job akutakuwa na increment of salary mm-hmm. still earning that 50000 the amount of goods you could buy back then is very minimal to what you can buy right now yeah. okay be it anything be it unga whatever you're buying especially these staple things okay so as the dollar is continuing to rise mm-hmm. okay the kenya shilling losing value and you're working somewhere and you're you're not thinking about how can you earn in dollars or how can you increase this pay of yours you're still earning like 250000 you're earning 10 years ago mm-hmm. my friend you've lost a lot a lot of purchasing power like what yeah, you're saying Chen Alion yeah. the purchasing power of the goods you can buy right now is very very minimal as compared to what you could buy long time so with that said what we keep talking about what do we have this year elections uh, we have a paper here i just seen it right now ruto mudavadi promise to set kenyans free <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what freedom they're talking about my friend. <laughs> I need to be funny. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> I mean, first of all, Kenyans we are we are in captivity. <laughs> as in, as in, it's just funny. I don't know I don't know what they mean by setting us free but my friend economic captivity. Yani to be free. There's no freedom we are going into and if you look at it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So my question was to you guys what 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 do you think with elections coming in what fears are, what do investors normally do especially like post election violence I believe a lot of capital flew out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Course, capital yeah, outflows. Scared, scared There's the a lot scared, of capital yeah. outflows. So with speculation without any touching very deeply what do you guys think of Kenyan economy this year? Uh, first of all i think uh uh during the election year economy the economy actually does pretty well cuz cuz money is being pumped into the economy by these big wigs trying to get uh, trying to get uh the politicians the politicians yeah so a lot of money is usually pumped out a lot of businesses our friends people who do printing nini they get gigs and him say in 5 years you make 10 million you make it in one year <laughs> so uh, uh, for for such times it it uh, it, it, it improves the economic yes mm-hmm. but now the consequence comes in on uh, the the the, uh, uh, the, result, the, uh, the results of the elections and how uh, people are uh, people uh, people take the election results so one of uh, first of all it's uh, who comes in as the president Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what are his policies um, say you know so mm-hmm. uh, what are his policies businesses people now this big wigs in terms of business also 
they try and engage, engage a president in terms of the, uh, their economic uh, uh, statements mhm unza pata president mwingine ana kasa like in the states mm-hmm. president mwingine anataka high taxes for business people mm-hmm. mwingine anataka low taxes for business people mm-hmm. so depending on also who comes on board can you know policies akura policy you try akura policies eh exactly i was just doing working here the very hard to hear yeah, people but, uh, exactly. discussing hey, this mm-hmm. case coming mm-hmm. this policy exactly but if you look at can you voting if you look <laughs> if you look at like someone like Kibaki, Kibaki's policies uh, really really helped Kenya mm-hmm. to, uh, to come back to that uh, 85 I, uh, this was after Moi yeah, after Moi mm-hmm. the country was a bit fucked up mm-hmm. but after Kibaki came in with good policies good economic policies and elevated economics to straighten Kidogo yeah, to straighten Kiasi mm-hmm. we then put Uhuru is not an economist a political scientist to run a country mm-hmm. the economy is that you can see it on the charts mm-hmm. so uh, also another thing is uh, they 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 are uh, uh if if the attentions after the, after after elections mm-hmm. not the post election violence ama 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 like if there's no violence also so if 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 we get a a, a smooth transition or someone who uh we uh, we put someone who uh, who has policies of uh, on business then uh the the economy can can uh, can uh, can get a ground to stand on now what fucks up uh 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 what makes elections uh uh worrying is now if people now cause uh, 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 causes clashes mm-hmm. and yeah, for uh, sure. exactly like yeah. post mm-hmm. elections and i think it's mostly with with us uh third world countries <laughs> me, me, me i've never seen like a, a long like, like a long election violence in the states maybe back in the they, they, 1900s they uko cannot sustain they destroy the economy exactly to uh, and uh, no one apenda kuchunga economy yao mm-hmm. they, they mm-hmm. can't become number two. <laughs> their ego is too much so for kenya the economy is uh, unemployment is at 40% yes, Akuna, that's yeah. where we are right now yeah. 40. 40 literally oh, out of 100 10 kenyans don't have a job Hey, out of 140 yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 on a job 40 mm. exactly so unemployment is yeah, sure though yeah around that I, i swear around 40% yeah at trading economics let me confirm but yeah continue mm. so utapata utapata uh, for for such uh, for, uh, for such a country like our, like our economy is already too well so it's tough yeah, the moment we don't put someone who can mm. bring up the the the, uh, the economy mm-hmm. it was so difficult now for the economy to even uh 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 I get stimulated and at least come back when especially now the dollar is going to rise if 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 rates come back mm-hmm. so imagine we, we we've been falling with a falling dollar mhm asa what about a rising dollar see to fall asa in deep holes deeper holes i mean so point is that like uh uh, uh the kenya shillings has been, uh, has been has been so devalued based on first of all our our, our it's not so bad ras it's according to this this jobless rates if i stick on this line and they come to kenya which is here at like 6% 6%, <laughs> 6%. <laughs> anyway yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so uh, for, for 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 elections it's, it's basically that way mm-hmm. now just to 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 wait and see who uh, who will come into that seat mm-hmm. but so uh, for me i don't even care so much about about uh okay yes i have to care okay you know it's my country yeah, yeah, but just, <laughs> just uh, be honest <laughs> yeah be but honest. like literally i don't know their policies yeah, their I agendas you, i just know raila wants to give us so you know doing cgrt tribalis <laughs> yeah, like yeah, i'm going yeah. this direction because of this can no 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 any view of what you think of the economy kenya yeah, or you have first, no point first of all let me just start by saying Um, I'm not well qualified to give views on what is happening on the Kenyan economy for sure because one I don't really track the numbers so mm-hmm. I don't know what really happens on a day to day month to month basis in the mm-hmm. Kenyan economy mm-hmm. but I have some opinions <laughs> my opinions could be wrong they could be right, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. but I think one generally uh historically the problem with the Kenyan economy comes in because of politics Uh, our country is hugely affected by the political climate just like sure. any other country mm-hmm. and unfortunately as much as we have a stable government we also have an unstable government especially during times of election. elections so during election times there is a high chance that at least as much as we won't see uh, post election violence like the one we had in 2007 which is what everyone wishes for Sometimes we may see some riots, sometimes we may see some candidates refuse to accept the results. We may see 
uh, the whole process of the election being prolonged may just have some scaffolds so kenya being that time a bit unstable exactly mm-hmm. that instability does not bring in a very very good investment climate does not bring in a very very good economic climate mm. so generally i tend to equate an election to bad economic times personally mm-hmm. uh, the second thing that i'd say is the policy of the guy who's coming in is very very important mm-hmm. so we really need also to understand okay uh, who comes in and what policies does this guy have mm. uh, like is he a person who can perform is he a person who can fight but also you have like corruption mm-hmm. uh, is he a person who can support uh, bills like the startup bill to support the kenyan economy and to support kenyan entrepreneurs and such things those are some of the most important things but unfortunately when you look at our politics uh, most people don't think hard about some of those things that you're talking about instead mm-hmm. what really Uh, occupies our minds or what really defines how we'll vote is where you come from your geographic location so as much as the guy who's vying may be not qualified uh, <laughs> may not know what to do may mm-hmm. not be a performer mm-hmm. you may still back him up just because he came from your geographic location mm-hmm. so that's the main problem that we have and it's not a wise idea to try yeah and make decisions like that For i think sure. one of the biggest revolutions that we can have in kenya is when you have uh especially the young people and long time ago if you look at history uh, the universities had a very big impact on elections and policies that were being made in these countries uh the student leaders had a very huge impact on what was happening mm-hmm. but right now that's dying off uh you you find that the student institutions are no longer very very active in pursuing some of these things Uh, it's very hard to find someone who's willing to lead us into a revolution i'm not saying we should go into one <laughs> we <But> need <laughs> eh <Hey. laughs> <Hey. laughs> <Hey. laughs> <Hey. laughs> <Hey. laughs> like she go up and lead side to one but you need something like a revolution we we need to change some things <clears throat> if we can be able to fight because i feel like the kenyan uh, culture the kenyan culture compared to other neighbors that we have we are very hard working people mm-hmm. uh, we have the resources we have the ideas we are quite developed mm-hmm. uh, we are quite educated also mm-hmm. so we don't have as much as we have handicaps we also have the opportunity to do something great mm-hmm. but that opportunity is stifled by politics and i think when we are able to kill that idea of politics affecting what really happens to us as individuals is when we'll make some bit of progress at least in mm-hmm. in in developing this economy mm-hmm. but again If you want to understand the Kenyan economy again for us we have to our view of economics will always be affected by our view of markets that's how we start like we'll always start by looking at markets and we'll go back to the economy because as mm-hmm. we are practitioners mm-hmm. our, our, our our view on the economy will always be affected what's happening in markets and if you look like at the Kenyan stock market it's mm-hmm. been quite dead for some time now quite? okay dead mm-hmm. it's not a very very active market mm-hmm. it's really? done better before okay. a long time ama shut down Because I think the last two years the stock market have been doing pretty well. Okay, it's done pretty well, but that is because also the other global markets have been doing mm, quite yeah. well. So it's mm-hmm. a correlation effect. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the Kenyan market independently, I think it's done way way better. If you look at the 2002 uh period, we had more IPOs coming in. Uh, we had more volumes being traded in the mm-hmm. market we had more local people taking part in the kenyan stock market mm-hmm. but right now those things We're are not happening mm-hmm. like if i ask any of you uh, we are three of us how many people do you know who just trade kenyan stocks for a living mm, few uh, one one job moja we Is he? Is he for a living oh, first oh, living. <laughs> 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 so i think we need to bring in back some volume we need to bring in uh, the idea that people can make money in the Kenyan stock market mm-hmm. we need to bring in more companies going for ipo we need to see more people uh, taking their companies public and people investing in such things we need to see more people shunning away from the investments of land and taking more money into the stock market and capital markets those are the things that i think personally mm-hmm. will bring in some change and some uh, movement forward when when people can be able to do that i think we can be able to see some slight change in our mm-hmm. country mm-hmm. but for that I'm, i'm i'm actually reading a lot on uh on, on what is happening first of all um, for me to understand a topic i like starting historically all the way to where we where currently we are. are where we came from exactly for, to where we are so, so it is only by knowing where we come from that we can know where we are going exactly mm-hmm. so using that analogy i first wanted to understand how capitalism was born 
mm. uh, how it spread to other countries uh why some countries benefited from it a lot and how now countries like Kenya and other countries can do a lot to bring us back and i think one of the things that i have already picked is entrepreneurship is really really important to an economy mm-hmm. very 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 important mm-hmm. if you look at a country like the united states and a china china is one country which has really really caught up with what is happening in the united states mm-hmm. right often in this country we'll blame the politicians we'll blame the policy makers for the troubles we have and i think that's not right also at some point i think we should also strive to look back down to ourselves because by the end of the day if we have a good economic climate if you have a good investment climate what really matters is how many companies are being started mm-hmm. and how i think that's capital is coming in. exactly and how much capital is coming in to support these companies mm-hmm. because companies cannot be started without capital right for sure exactly mm-hmm. so i think for me i've already picked that we need to see more people going into their own businesses we need to see more people deciding to start businesses Mm-hmm. If you look at a, t- a country like the US there are very very many people who are just starting out on their own businesses like people who mm-hmm. that's their culture that's mm-hmm. their and there's capital to back up those ideas in fact those ca- that capital comes back all the way to us because sometimes sure. you'll find a Kenyan company backed by foreign capital mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and that's what a we lot need of them. exactly mm-hmm. this country we need more young people going into the businesses pinnacle. exactly like if i ask you again i just like taking samples This is not a very good statistic but if you can do more research you can get it. If you just ask I know I know at least 10 friends I have at least 10 friends apart from you too you have at least 10 friends apart from me and you have at least 10 friends. So if the three of us were to say how many people your age or between let's say one or two years old are in business I'm sure out of 10 maybe you'll tell me two or one the rest are either looking for employment or are working or they're just there. Mm-hmm. Right? So we need to see more people devoting their time to entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and trying to solve those big big problems that we have. We have some very big problems and the problems are always opportunities for the for entrepreneurs. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have to see more people get that to solve. culture. Like exactly. That culture of people not looking for a job. Ustate sana ujapoa kazi. Hata ask not what your country can do for you. Ask mm-hmm. what you can do for your country. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. So also try to contribute in developing mm-hmm. your country. Don't always say he in chat we kona hii mash. Wao mfanya nini? Mhm. Hizo la mtu. What have you done? Umesaidia aje inchi progress to save it. Unataka tukusaidia. Exactly. So you can also Sipa take part. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the mentality we are trapped in. Exactly. So that's that's the idea we have. Like we're always complaining. Yeah, for sure. Always. Mm. But the people and the people who are complaining actually are the ones who are not making moves. And that's the same thing I was telling you guys last week. You remember when I, I came and told you oi 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 I'm feeling bad for the youth <laughs> the Kenyan youth are lost I swear <laughs> the youth lead prayers <laughs> I swear the youth man the youth are lost like like what I was saying people are crying no jobs people are not even taking initiative people exactly. are just uh to remember so like last year we saw you know last year we saw a lot of people graduating because after covid you know the lift yeah, constraints yeah, yeah. now last year people happy uh, graduated which is a good thing a good achievement a good milestone in their life but now there's nothing out here there's nothing and now they like you're saying they're complaining there's no jobs they're not doing anything they are, they want to go abroad thinking that's where they'll get salvation <laughs> <laughs> salvation <laughs> there <laughs> Yes, they think that's what will save them from poverty, from not working. There's, it's same everywhere. If you go to US, US, I've been there. I've been in the US. I've been in the UK. I've seen how people work. They work ten times harder than us. And like you said, Kenyans are hard workers. Mm-hmm. And if you go to the US, they're working harder than us. Exactly. More time, more innovations, more patents are like being signed. China, the the rule is nine nine six. So you really? work twelve hours from nine to nine, from Monday to Saturday. Mm. 996 that's the culture and now we're in a globalized economy exactly competition so, is global so Kenya us Daniel at trade una compete na any can ni msama 9 to 9 ule jamaa ako 996 ule jamaa wa china eh hey, it's true anataka ku buy chinese yuan anataka kuza dollar pale anataka so that guy is investing more time he's obviously going to be more competent than you mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. if the education system is better they're going to be more competent mm-hmm. than you <clears throat> so those are the things that I'd say we need to look into mm-hmm. one our education system mm-hmm. two how many more people are going into business mm-hmm. and the Kenyan parent has the obligation to allow 
the young people to go into business because you also them. realized exactly it starts from it them. starts from them it's a culture that starts from you know up, if you understand, understand the culture you have to go up mm-hmm. and if you look at what parents do is when you tell them you want to go into a business they try and tell you how difficult it business is to make money in business very difficult exactly but if you tell or this or person or even that impossible or impossible you, it, you no. can't make a fortune in business you can't do some things but mm. you need more people going into business for us to solve Taking the problems of this country mm. yep so yeah as as we conclude i think just to say That's something with one. with what you are saying uh from the book as reading what they forgot to teach you at school one of the chapters is <laughs> i love that book i it was a page turn i think it's cuz i have a bias kind of hate schools <laughs> <laughs> I hate the system of what it does and how it corrupts our mind and it's true from what I was looking at on those you need that school for people <clears throat> who do you think you'll hire you know what they said about that book <laughs> one thing schools have really succeeded in doing mm-hmm. is showing the importance of why we need schools <laughs> <laughs> that's where schools have succeeded <laughs> no one ever questions no one ever does anything <laughs> i guess that's what they've succeeded in doing they've done it very keenly and very subtly and successfully but when was the first school started you know those are questions people should ask exactly and when, when was the first started? school started like the universities at least i understand like i have when you come during the industrial revolution they needed people to run those big industries mm. so they formed schools like harvard what training is as our executives and your kuran is of which was a good initiative exactly, back then back then <laughs> but right now those big corporations already have people running them we're no longer now in the industrial age mm. in the information age mm. so we need new training a revolution and the schools don't have a revolution yeah because <laughs> schools are very good at teaching you what has happened not what is to come like like what you're saying they're trained so that they can go do this yeah. sort of along the way school became a business a profit schools have endowment funds they mm. invest in yeah, so that's in bas ana billions of dollars they charge a lot even to teach you exactly Manza. as in yeah. somewhere along the way it lost so one of the things i was going to say in terms of uh start business entrepreneurship one of the points was you don't need permission from a young age we grew up uh like I was telling you can we imprisoned in such a way that you cannot rebel cannot come out yep. you you with your parents you cannot quit school you cannot run out of the house you cannot say i'm not eating this food what will you do you so, have to eat sort of you're caged <laughs> so long along we came we were told to be, be kind be good always obey it's not always a good thing because you always told whenever you want to do something raise your hand wait to be picked <laughs> if you're not picked sorry my friend go and to the next issue <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah, so over here like, people yeah. not even are not starting business they're so rigid that when we say ask permission that's why people look for confirmation bias ah since ken is doing ah okay acha njaribu ama they'll go ask someone if this person says no it's like that they give up on that idea so one of the things as you're getting into business what ken was saying how as you got into business we refused <laughs> to wait for permission ravunja <laughs> rebel that's, <laughs> that's how we got to where we are and because we had to go against the status quo because of course by last dropping out refusing to do all that and that doesn't mean we dropped out and refused school ken is doing some nice projects taras is doing nice projects we're reading a lot of books the education part of the journey we're out here it's very you really need to read and learn a lot and as ken said on the information age information is everywhere it's people not... people I, i think that's that's also another point that i've realized mm. if you think about it people don't go to school to learn mm. they go to school to be qualified to do something if mm. you, if the interest is learning you can learn from anywhere exactly but the interest is being qualified like exactly. really pay your paper at least you on a degree it's mm. it's it's not learning really that because if it's learning let me ask you mm-hmm. if you start a business mm-hmm. and you attend a business class mm-hmm. who has learned more about a business so these are two people yeah. moja mean the business moja learn a business school who's going business they end a business school for years yeah. Mimi nianza biashara for years. Four years. Four years later we come. Tu wako kwa ground. Tuambie sasa wewe ulifundishwa for four years how to be a businessman. Yeah. Mimi for four years nimekuwa nikijenga hii business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tu wako kwa ground run. Mm-hmm. Even if you failed mm-hmm. I, I believe you have learned more. Exactly. Even if that business didn't work out. Exactly. You know what to know to do. Umse hata jaika anything to practice. Nothing. He's coming mm-hmm. now to try out. And that's why we say in theory there is no difference between theory and practice, practice. but in practice but in practice there is. and that's why i was telling you from my point 
where schools have really succeeded is where <laughs> in showing you how important the school is in your life and sort of you leave this school to give you the A grade and tells you now you're good to go in life <laughs> you're not good you finished business i know can get this is what they forgot to teach you but anyway that was just as a conclusion on a light note not on a light note on an important note go think about it be enlightened and that's part of what we do at Trader show giving you trading our ideas with you guys. So I think that's it for today boys. Yes. Uh, it was an interesting chat. Interesting chat. Global markets. Uh, global markets and some extra extra information there. So thank you for tuning in. Uh we'll see you guys next week. Uh be sure for better and more entertaining uh episodes coming. We have a lot of guests lined up. We just start to planning them properly and then we'll start rolling them out. But that's what we have in line this year and we have a lot of content also coming. A lot of seminars that will be coming will be talking about them. Uh we did in Yeri uh, last weekend. Uh, we're looking to go back very soon and many other counties will be telling you guys about and having more seminars around the country and maybe Since some guy has invited us to Kisi County particularly Kisi mm-hmm. University we are coming it's coming <laughs> we have to enlighten you guys yes. as we have done in this podcast shows so yeah i like that episode guys thank you for tuning in so i'm sure we'll see you guys next week same place same time uh the same of us maybe with a guest but that's it from us see you soon peace <laughs>